According to Matthew, following the Lord's Supper, Jesus goes to the garden and prays. He prays, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. We all should pray for what we want. Then and only then are we to acquiesce to God's will. It is okay to pray for what you desire so that you can be a more faithful and empowered disciple of Christ. This includes those who find themselves hurting and in pain in this very difficult season. It's okay to pray for help. And then there are those who don't seem to be heard, who are unable to obtain justice and sense a lack of righteousness. It's okay to pray for justice. And then there are others who aren't able to pursue their livelihoods and they're frustrated and they're tired and they're afraid. It's okay to ask if you can teach again. And for so many, we are so anxious and so overwhelmed that we need moments of peace. Hi, everyone. This is Tim Womack, Senior Pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Vero Beach, Florida. I've been asked by many within our congregation to simply share a few thoughts in a devotional manner in regard to how we are to pray during times of struggle, anxiety, and isolation when we're hurting and afraid. How are we to pray unto God? Well, one of the passages I always find myself going back to when people ask me how to pray and what should I pray for is simply by going back to Matthew chapter 26, really uh, about verse 39, the second part of 39, where Jesus is in the garden. It's after the Last Supper. He's gone there to pray. The disciples, of course, have fallen asleep. And it's Jesus who lifts up this prayer. My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. And going on a little further, he said again, Father, let this cup pass from me. And then he said, yet not my will, but thy will be done. I think that is an example of prayer, that we can ask for that which is what we want. It is Jesus who asks that the cup be taken from him, that he not have to suffer, suffer, that he not have to go through the pain and the agony that is before him. He asked for this to be taken away, and it makes a lot of sense. How many times have we asked for our pain to be taken away, our suffering to be removed? How often have we prayed for those things which have been barriers to us in our ministry or in our Christian walk? Lord, take these things out of my way. Help me endure. And it's okay to ask for those things. As long as I believe it is in a righteous manner, not a selfish manner. Certainly, if you ask for the six numbers that uh, equal the lottery and ask that they be given to you in the right sequence, um, I'm not sure that's the way God answers prayers. But you can pray for what you want if it allows you to be more righteous in a right relationship with God, be more loving uh, towards one another, so that you can be a more faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, so that you can testify to the good news of Jesus Christ. It is okay to ask for what you want, the health of your family, the blessings of God so that you may have enough food to eat and nourishment and, and enough shelter, uh, those basic pleasures that you may have love and life. Uh, nothing wrong with asking for those things. Now, after you've asked for them and prayerfully discerned God's answer, that's when we have to do the second part 
of Jesus' prayer. Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. It is always the case in our prayers, whether we like it or not, that we have to acquiesce to the will of God. And there are many times that we have prayed for that which is what we want and we did not get it. And in those moments, we need to simply lift up that prayer that Jesus lifted up in the garden. Not my will, but thy will be done. I think if we follow that guideline of not feeling bad at all about asking for what we want, as long as it's righteous and not just wholly selfish, so that we can proclaim the good news and be good and faithful witnesses of Christ. Nothing wrong with that. Yet we always, always have to acquiesce to the will of God and to the answers of God. And I think when we find that balance, uh, we do well in our prayer life. So never feel guilty or anxious for praying for something you want particularly if it's a health or well-being of a family member, nothing wrong with that. That prayer is lifted up uh, throughout Scripture, and Jesus prays for others as well. We uh, should be doing that, and that's okay. Never feel guilty when you're going through crises to be able to pray to God to get you out of the crisis. But it's always God's will, and it forever shall be God's will, and we acquiesce to that truth. Now, that's kind of a little discipline that I have in my prayer life. I ask for what it is I think is a faithful thing to ask for, and if it doesn't come the way I had asked for it, I acquiesce to God's will. So I hope that's helpful. Again, you can find that, that scripture in Matthew 26. It's when Jesus goes to the garden to pray. So uh, just as he was feeling alone, isolated, scared, anxious, so we feel that way today. And so it's right that we should pray that these days move on and that we get through them. Yet, like Jesus, we will acquiesce to God's will. I hope this is helpful in your prayer life, and I hope it is a good discipline for you to use as you pray not just for yourself but for others. God bless and be safe and be well. Music